Okay, let's work on a brute force algorithm. And you should really practice writing brute force algorithms. They are usually relatively easy to create for a problem. That means they're probably the right way to go first. And if they're good enough, you can stop right there. Even if they're not good enough, they may give you some insight into how to solve the problem, and they give you kind of an upper bound on how bad a better solution can be. If you try putting something better together and it looks like it's going to be worse than brute force, you can throw it away. So we're going to sketch an algorithm to produce everything with the form of a solution. So everything that looks like a solution but may not actually be valid or good, it says up here. And in this particular case, we already noted that valid is kind of a nice thing to stick with, the way we defined it. Valid says that every woman is matched with exactly one man, and every man is matched with at most one woman. There might be men who aren't matched because we have extra men. And good talks about stability. Stability is hard, but validity here as we defined it, that is having a matching that, that fits those criteria I mentioned, that's not as hard. So let's produce all those valid solutions, and later on we can test if they're good. Okay, so we're supposed to give a name to our algorithm, which would be something like all solutions to uh, the unstable marriage problem, which is a super long name, so I'm just right away going to shorten it to ASU. And so we want to write this algorithm, ASU, and it's going to have some parameters. And right away I kind of run into a little bit of trouble. What are the parameters? And if I'm going to run into trouble, again, I'm going to look at how to solve a 320 problem, and it tells me I should look at trivial problems and small problems first. I mean, we did all that work creating those trivial and small problems, and they're super useful. Uh, now, before I write out a trivial or small problem, I do want to emphasize one thing. We do not care if our solution is good. And that means we do not care about the preferences. So really, that just means we've got something like man 1 and man 2 and man 3 and man 4 and woman 1 and woman 2. And the rest of it, all the preferences that would be in there, which is most of what we'd have to write out, right? It just doesn't really matter. So what are we going to do? Uh, well, you know, you could say I'm going to pair man 1 and woman 1. It's an easy way to start. And then ask yourself, have I broken the problem down? And the answer is, yeah, you, you really have broken the problem down, right? Because look at this. You now have a smaller problem that looks like an unequal stable marriage problem. There's one woman and three men. It happens to start with two instead of starting with one, but who cares? Okay, One woman and three men, and we need to find a way to pair them up. So this is a similar looking subproblem, and that sounds like a recursive call to me. So I'll pair woman one up with man one, and then I'll recursively find all the solutions to this subproblem, and I'll just tack that pairing onto all of those solutions. Now that hasn't given me all the solutions though, right? Because woman one doesn't have to be married to man one. She does have to be married to someone though. So I can find all the solutions by ensuring that I try each of her possible partners. And what's nice is those will give me disjoint sets of solutions. That is, there's not going to be any overlap. In one of my four sets of solutions, woman one is married to man one. In another woman, one is married to man two. In another woman, one is married to man three. In another woman, one is married to man four. And together, those are all the possibilities. That's actually called a partition. Uh, I've got a larger set of solutions and I've got several subsets. The subsets are disjoint, and together they make up the whole original set. It's called a partition in case you run it across it again, and it's a handy thing to be doing if we're writing a recursive solution, because if we can partition the problem into pieces, then we can solve each of those pieces and put them back together, and that's just what we'll do. So we're going to make four different sets for this particular instance, but in general, uh, one set for each man of sub-solutions, we'll tack on the extra pairing, and then we'll union all those together. Uh, so what do we need as our input? Well, we need, essentially we need this diagram without the lines, because the lines are solution, uh, as our input. And that really just means we need the set of men, M, and we need the set of women, W. We don't need the preferences. So ASU will take a set of men and a set of women. And what will ASU look like? Um, we haven't talked about a base case yet. 
Uh, but we did have our trivial cases. Remember when there were zero women and one woman? Uh, I like degenerate cases. I think they make great base cases. So let's have zero women be our base case. So if the cardinality of w is equal to zero, then what's the solution? Well, we actually solved it up above, remember? It's the empty set. Okay. Uh, otherwise, we are going to, for each M I in M. Oh, uh, we'll want to choose a woman. It doesn't matter which woman, which woman we choose. We can choose the first essentially, but remember W is a set, so there isn't a first. So I'm just going to say choose W in W. We'll arbitrarily choose one of the women. That's a lowercase W in uppercase W. I tell you what, I'll put those little lines on the top so it's clear that that's the set uh, and that's the individual. This is the set up here. Okay. So choose one woman from the set of women. For each man in the set of men, we're going to generate one solution subset. Uh, so generate the set of solutions. So we're generating multiple solutions. Uh, which are M I married to W, right? Because we said we would marry M1 off to W1 and then we'd do the subsolutions. Unioned with each of the possible subsolutions. So I'm going to call those S prime because we'd probably call S our set of solutions, such that S prime is drawn from a recursive call. We're just going to solve the subproblem. ASU applied to what's the subproblem? Remember, we're removing man one and woman one. In this case, that's M, I, and W. So how do we remove an element from a set? We'll just subtract M, I from M. And oh, I promised I would put those little lines on, didn't I? I'm totally going to forget that somewhere. And subtract W from the set W. And I think generate this set where we tack on oh I, I made that a union so this better be a set so we've got the set of the single pairing of mi and w unioned with the sub solution for every sub solution that comes back from our recursion and that gives us a generated set of solutions that's what asu is supposed to produce a set of solutions uh, and let's just uh, return the union of the generated sets. Now, is this an algorithm? Well, it's a little underspecified. I mean, what do I mean by choose and this whole generate thing is a bit sketchy, but yeah, we could totally implement this.